what we're really looking for in the these mountains of macroeconomic statistics that we have at our fingertips are really nothing more than clues about whether soft landing versus hard landing. And the difference between the two is really pretty simple when you stop and think about it. It's really about jobs and employment. What makes companies decide one day we need to trim a few costs, but we're going to hang on to workers, and the next to throw in the towel and make the, make the mass layoffs that we all associate recession. And really, the difference is outlook. Well, outlook combined with new sales falling, forcing companies to work through their backlogs. And when backlogs get down far enough and with no new sales coming in, you have way too many idle workers. Now, this cycle, is, which is unique compared to a lot of other cycles, Firms have said, we're going to hoard our workers anyway. Even if, they're, even if a few of them are idle, we'll trim some of their hours and cut some costs, some minor costs along the way. But we're going to hoard workers because, first of all, we're convinced that there will be, the downturn will be short and shallow and that there will be an aggressive recovery, say, in 2024. We're going to need those workers. And the second thing is that their outlook has been relatively stable. They think the recovery is coming. They, they've bought into the soft landing narrative. And in that respect, time is working against them as well as us because the longer they go where they don't see clarity on the soft landing scenario. Yeah, Jay Powell talked about it all the time. Janet Yellen says the economy can't possibly go in recession, but we still don't see sales picking up. We see our backlog continue to dwindle. We've got a lot of idle workers. Maybe we should start thinking about the dreaded layoffs. One of these mountains of macroeconomic data that we have available that's PMI figures. And PMIs are almost constructed to give us this process of, of an economy moving from a soft landing possibility to more and more hard landing data. They give us information on sales, backlogs, employment, prices, all of that stuff. And we'll start with the United States. S&P Global came out with its PMIs, its flash PMIs for the month of November, 2023. The composite was unchanged from October 50.7 in each. Services was up a little bit at 50.8 compared to 50.6, but that's 50.8 is not a good number for services. And we see manufacturing fall back below 50, though it was just at 50 in the month of October. So 49.4 in November. What S&P Global had to say, though, Relatively subdued demand conditions and dwindling backlogs led firms to cut their workforce numbers for the first time since June 2020, as service providers joined goods producers in reducing headcounts. The good news, if you choose to see it that way, is that at least prices appear to be softening. Cost pressures softened further, with input prices rising at the slowest pace in just over three years. But that as I often say, is the bad news. Because disinflation is, while well, welcome as compared to inflation or consumer price pressures that are too, too extensive, disinflation means weakness. And weakness, prolonged weakness, means businesses are forced into that choice. So the S&P Global PMIs for the U.S. suggest that businesses are being forced into that choice. Businesses are less confident about the soft landing scenario, and more of them at the margins are throwing in the towel and making that final determination that they do need to start laying off workers to better align their payrolls with their output. And output doesn't appear to be picking up. New sales continue to dwindle, both manufacturing as well as services, though, S&P data said the, the new order PMI was briefly small, uh, was slightly positive in November. It had been down for three months prior, but essentially nothing really has changed over the last four months. The disinflation rebound itself becoming more and more a distant memory. Businesses that were kind of hoping that rebound might have been the, the definitive signal for the soft landing instead Again, we get more softening in the economy, and it's been a softening for a long period of time already. You can understand why a lot of firms at the margins are saying, okay, we've had enough. Let's get into more aggressive cost cutting because we don't see business actually picking up. Over in Europe, we look at the European PMIs. The composite there was actually higher, although fractionally, 47.1 versus 46.5. Services up a little bit. Manufacturing up a little bit, though it was at a six-month high of 43.8. 
But again, S&P Global in describing their PMI data for the month of November sounds all too familiar. The overall reduction in business activity was again mainly a symptom of falling new orders. As has been the case in each month since June, companies in the Eurozone reported a decline in new business. The latest reduction was marked, but, off, but the softest in four months amid weaker falls in both manufacturing and services. New export orders, including intra-euro area trade, continued to decrease rapidly. Global trade recession still ongoing. With new orders down, companies again depleted their outstanding business midway through the final quarter. Backlogs of work decreased for the eighth month running and at a marked pace that was only slightly weaker than that recorded in the previous survey period. So again, same familiar story. New sales are not coming in, they're contracting. Backlogs that continue to get work, work down. Businesses, therefore, no lower backlogs, no new sales, got too many workers, more and more is saying we need to start laying them off. And we've seen that across a lot of Europe where unemployment rates have increased pretty significantly, including places like Germany and France. Speaking of France, the French PMI, that actually worsened to a degree in November, whereas, say, the German one, which we've been talking about pretty much every month over the last year, that one got a little bit better. So Germany was a little bit better. France, not so much. The French composite was down fractionally to 44.5. Services was up fractionally, to, but to 45.3. So not really good numbers here. Manufacturing, 42.6, which just happened to be a 42-month low. And once again, the consistent theme here. France's economy recorded another steep reduction in business activity midway through the fourth quarter, extending the current period of continuous contraction seen since June. Europe went into the disinflation rebound first earlier in the year and came out of it first in the summertime, where the U.S. consumer was still splurging, the European economy was already rolling over and heading lower. Demand for French goods and services also worsened at the fastest pace in three years in November. That's not a good sign. While backlogs of work were depleted further. Business expectations toward the next 12 months deteriorated, contributing to the first month of job cutting since late 2020. So again, consistent case. Lower sales and maybe accelerating to the downside in France anyway, but lower sales across Europe depleting backlogs, more and more companies telling S&P Global and its various, uh, various survey providers, they're actually cutting workers. Japan, let's go over to Asia. The Japanese Jaibun PMIs came out and same thing. Essentially, the composite was down half a point to 50, right at 50, but that had been, of all of the major economies around the world, the Japanese had been the latest into both the supply shock as well as the disinflation rebound, which they're just coming out of, at least according to the PMI, as well as a lot of other economic data from Japan, including their third quarter GDP, which was not good. The services PMI was basically unchanged, manufacturing down to 46.4, so that one's going down more sharply. And what did they say about the Japanese economy? Activity at Japanese private sector firms stagnated midway through the fourth quarter of 2023. The latest reading marked the end of a 10-month sequence of rising activity. Manufacturers posted the strongest decline in production in nine months, while service providers signaled the second softest expansion in business activity in 2023 to date. And they also mentioned that price pressures were somewhat diminished in November, though still high. So Japan... Again, experiencing the disinflation rebound like everyone else, but much later in the process. So they're just starting to come back down and it's being led by manufacturers who are becoming aggressively weak again because Asia in particular is more exposed to the ongoing global trade recession that has not really let up. Just ask the Chinese. So any trade-based economy, whether it be Germany, Japan, South Korea to an extent, they're heavily exposed to the global trade recession. You expect that to be a leading indicator. That's the very reason why you see diminishing sales as well as diminishing backlogs. And now more and more diminishing payrolls. Whereas in other places like Europe-wide or the United States, the transition from soft landing to hard landing or really 
how a soft landing that's never really had much of a chance becomes a hard landing. It goes through this process of lower new, new sales, contracting backlog, both services as well as manufacturers, and businesses that want to hoard workers in a way, more determined way than they have ever in the past, they just don't have much choice. And they don't have much choice because they become more and more pessimistic even though Jay Powell is on TV all the time saying soft landing, soft landing, even though Janet Yellen says there's no way we can have a recession in the United States, business is what business is. You can hang in and, and hope for a more positive future, a real, a real recovery in 2024, but at some point, the sales continue to contract, even if it's a shallow contraction in sales, even if the backlogs are not just disappearing all at once, they're gradually being worked through. You go through that enough and you start to become pessimistic about the chances for a recovery, chances for a soft landing. You start to think, I've been waiting for quite a long time here. I don't think I can wait any longer. I'm going to start, start cutting back on workers, even though I really don't want to. I'm just not seeing it as far as the soft landing scenario goes. So we have a bunch of PMI data, that's just, which is also consistent with so-called hard data that we continue to get around the global economy. The United States, for example, the, the unemployment rate, which ticked up because the household survey saw a lot of jobs disappear in October. That's certainly consistent with the soft data. We got market, uh, market uh, signals, oil prices that are dropping on demand concerns, really serious demand concerns, and not just Chinese demand concerns. You've got Yield curves that are becoming more inverted all over again. We're getting away from September, fundamentals in the yield curve. Forward rates that were heavily inverted throughout. Now that heavy inversion is moving back toward the front of those curves. Lots of clues pointing in the direction of what might have been a soft landing, though not really likely. More and more, the balance is shifting in the direction of the hard landing. We're seeing more evidence, backlogs, new orders, and in particular, the one thing that was consistent in all of these PMIs, they mentioned employment and not in the good way. Manufacturers, cost pressures suffered of these mountains of economic, what we're really looking for in this mountains of soft, hard landing is where businesses throw in the towel and say, we can't hold on anymore. We don't see a short, short shallow shit 